Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab series showing how to develop a SAR ADC reference input. In the last section, we described all the different components in the model. In this section, we will show how to configure these components within the model to verify the ADC reference input settling performance. We will also show an example of a system performance verification using the model. As a reminder, in this presentation, we are developing at the reference input model for the ADC ADS8881. This slide shows the timing used for this reference input model. We need to develop waveforms to close and open the switches at the appropriate time to model the reference input behavior of the device. A logic high on the control signal closes the switch, and a logic low opens the switch. Note that for this design, we will be modeling eight MSB VDAC bit decisions. This is done by connecting the CREF to the reference output eight times via the control and bit switches. The control switch acts as a gate to allow eight bit switches to pass through. In other words, the bit switch is running continuously so the control switch is used to select the number of times the bit switch connects CREF to the voltage reference. Each time the bit switch closes, the CREF capacitor is charged by the reference and its associated filter capacitor. This creates a large current pulse, noted IREF. Between each CREF charge cycle, the reset switch is used to reset the capacitor. Note that IREF is the same amplitude each time the bit switch is closed, as CREF is always discharged from the reset switch. The bit switch timing is set by the ADC conversion timing. The conversion period is 500 nanoseconds from the ADC datasheet. The ADS8881 is an 18-bit converter, so the conversion time is broken into 18 different clocks or 30 nanoseconds per clock. Thus, the bit switch timing is set to 30 nanoseconds. The control switch allows eight bit conversion clock pulses to pass and is set high for eight conversion clock periods or 240 nanoseconds. You might wonder why we only pass eight pulses for this 18 bit converter example. This is because the current pulses generated by this model are always equal to the amplitude of the MSB pulse. In the actual device, the pulses will be binary weighted and will generally be smaller than the MSB pulse. Thus, the reason we only use eight pulses in this model is because the average current from the eight pulses provides a conservative approximation of the average current consumed in the actual device. Now that we have a general understanding of how the model works, we will look at how to configure the switches to implement this example timing. Let's look at how to configure the switches. Double click on the switch to set the switch parameters. The default parameters may have an impact on performance, thus it is best to change them. The off resistance should be at one terahom and the on resistance should be at one microohm. Note that the default sets the off resistance to one gigaohm and the on resistance to zero ohms. The on voltage and the off voltage set the voltage level that will cause the switch to open or close. We will use a square wave signal from the acquisition time source to open and close the switch. In this case, the switch will open with an input of zero volt and will close with an input of one volt. Now you can configure the signal source to control the switch bit switch. First, double click on the signal source to configure the signal. Second, under signal, press the button with the three dots. This will open the signal editor. Third, select the piecewise linear function type. This waveform type will allow us to generate a square wave 
that will control the switch operation. In the piecewise linear function, we can create any waveform shape or timing. In this case, we are simply creating a square wave that will turn the switch on when it is at 1 volt and turn it off when it is at 0 volt. The pattern will always start with the command repeat forever and end with end repeat. This will repeat the waveform between the two commands continuously. Each pattern corresponds to one conversion cycle. This example shows the pattern used to control the switch for the acquisition period. The switch will be closed for the first 13 nanoseconds and will remain open for the remainder of the cycle. Note that the rise and fall time of the waveform is limited to one nanosecond. The left-hand side of the waveform corresponds to the time, and the right-hand side corresponds to the voltage. In this example, at zero seconds, the voltage level is at zero volts. At one nanosecond, the voltage is changed to one volt. Tina will connect any two points in the list with a straight line. So the first two points transition the input from zero volts to one volt in one nanosecond. The third point keeps the voltage at one volt from one nanosecond to 14 nanoseconds. The fourth point transitions the voltage from one volt down to zero volts in one nanosecond and the final point extends the period to 30 nanoseconds. Here we show the timing that was used for the switch bit, the switch bit reset, and the control switch. The top switch signal, V bit, turns on and off at the conversion clock frequency, a half duty cycle with 30 nanosecond period. The middle signal, V reset, resets the C ref voltage right after V bit turns off. The switch turns on at 23 nanoseconds and turns off at 26 nanoseconds with a period of 30 nanoseconds. The bottom signal, V control, is on for 240 nanoseconds or eight conversion clocks. Since the ADC has a one mega sample per second sampling rate, this signal has a period of one microsecond. Notice that all waveforms maintain a one nanosecond rise and fall time. Now, SAR drive transient simulations require fine time increments to avoid obscuring important waveform information. Using the default settings in TINA may result in errors as the number of points or time resolution are optimized for fast simulation time. The set analysis parameter allows you to optimize the way the SPICE math engine works. Increasing the TR excitation subdivisions to 1000 and the TR time interval subdivisions to 10,000 will increase the number of points versus time, so we don't obscure fast transient behaviors. Make sure you make this change before running the SAR simulations. Note that you will need to press the finger button at the bottom to expand the list so you can edit these parameters. Another change you should make before running SPICE simulations is to increase the numeric precision to six digits under the Options menu. This will allow us to see the DC operating point to six digits. This is needed to set up the error measurement circuit as we will see in the next slide. In this slide, we will configure the reference settling error measurement meter. The meter needs to be configured to read zero error when the voltage at the reference input is settled by the steady state output of the reference driver circuit. In other words, when the reference voltage is fully settled, the error should read zero volts. This is achieved by setting the voltage source, VSS, on the bottom side of the meter to a DC voltage equal to the steady state reference output. It is important that this voltage is accurate to the microvolt level as we will settle to microvolts of error. This is why we increased the simulation numeric precision to six digits in the last slide. The transient reference output voltage is then compared to the DC steady state voltage source 
VFF, and when the voltage at the reference input is fully settled, the VREF error meter reads zero volts. Now we are prepared to look at the ADC settling using transient analysis. To do this, select Analysis, then Transient in the Tina Spice menu. Next, select a time range that allows you to examine a few conversions. For this example, the sampling rate is 1 MHz, so we ran the transient for 2 microseconds, which is 2 full cycles. The transient results for this example include the voltage across the CREF load capacitor, the transient current into the reference input, the reference input voltage, the reference settling error, the switch control signal that resets the CREF voltage, the conversion clock frequency signal, and the switch control signal that masks the number of times the reference is sampled on each conversion cycle. The most important signal that is monitored in this type of simulation is the error signal, noted VREF error. This signal compares the voltage at the reference input pin to a steady state voltage source, noted VSF. The DC voltage on VSF is set equal to the normal DC output of the reference when it is fully settled. The goal is to get a zero VREF error signal when the voltage of the SAR reference input is equal to the steady state reference output. In other words, the error will read zero when the reference input is fully settled. For proper reference input settling, we will look at the VREF error within each conversion clock cycle. Also notice that the CREF load capacitor is reset at the end of each conversion clock cycle. In addition to looking at the settling of the reference within each conversion clock cycle, it is important to look at the droop of the reference input voltage after many conversions. This is done to ensure the reference driver circuit has enough bandwidth or low enough output impedance after many conversions. In this example, we look at the reference input voltage droop after 100 conversions. Ideally, the voltage droop will be less than 1 LSV, or 38 microvolts. You can see in this example that the droop is about 25 microvolts, which is less than 1 LSB. This slide shows an example of a SAR reference driver circuit that is unable to recover after every conversion, where the reference input voltage droops. The OPA320 is stable driving the 22 microfarad bypass capacitor and is able to drive the reference input at lower sampling rates. However, the amplifier is unable to recover at the fast throughput rate of 1 mega sample per second. A transient simulation over many conversions is performed to look at the droop of the reference, in this case, 500 conversions. After 500 conversions, VREF error shows a large voltage droop at the reference input, exceeding 7 millivolts. This circuit is not optimal for a 1 mega sample per second throughput rate, but could work for the slower data rates. After building the TINA reference input macro model, it is useful to correlate its average current consumption versus the datasheet specification. After performing the transient simulation on the transient simulation results window, click on the current transient, noted IREF. On the top menu in the transient simulation results window, select process then averages. The simulator will calculate and display the average value and the absolute average value of the reference input current. Many SAR ADC datasheets provide the average reference input current specification at full throughput. Use the simulated average value to compare to the reference input current. The simulated value should be close or exceed the reference input current. In this example, a conservative approach was used, 
where the reference input sees the worst case MSB load capacitance eight times per conversion. The simulation model consumes 530 microamps at full throughput of one megasample per second, which is in the same order of magnitude of the datasheet spec of 300 microamps. By adjusting the duration of a control signal, the user can increase or reduce the number of times the reference input sees the MSB switch capacitive load and adjust the current consumption. In most cases, allowing the control signal high for four to eight conversion clocks produces a good approximation of the reference input load. Next, we examine a different type of SAR reference input model the TI device specific model. The TI device specific model is provided directly by the factory. The model is built based on the specific topology of the device and uses a weighted switching capacitive load. The behavior may be closer to the real silicon. However, the macro model is more complex and will tend to take a longer time to converge and perform simulations. The TI SAR reference input model transient simulation results are similar to the previous discrete charge model. This slide shows the transient results for the ADS8881 TI device specific SAR model available on the web. The model includes the reference input model as well as the SAR ADC input sample and hold voltage. The transient results for this example include the conversion start signal, the transient current into the reference input, the reference input voltage, and the reference settling error. It also includes the transient simulation of the SAR ADC input, such as the voltage at the SAR ADC input and the voltage across the sample and hold. This table summarizes the differences between the SAR reference input discrete charge model based on the datasheet parameters and the TI device specific reference input model provided by the manufacturer. The discrete charge reference input model is created based on the datasheet parameters and uses a conservative approach to the reference input capacitive load. In this simplified model, the reference input sees the worst case MSB load, switching several times per conversion. The circuit is relatively simple, so it offers fast and robust convergence and quick combination results. It can be applicable to any new or legacy SAR ADC. The TI device specific model uses a binary weighted or variable switching capacitive load, modeling the specific ADC device topology. This does provide more accurate results, but sometimes at the cost of circuit complexity and slower simulations. It is provided by the factory and may not be available for old devices, since the simulation results may be slower. In many cases, it is only used to verify final circuits after performing the design with the discrete charge model. That concludes this video. In the next video, we focus on op-amp buffer circuit design issues such as stability. Thank you for watching. Please try the quiz to check your understanding of this video's content.